I wanted to start with a, a kindred spirit. Yeah. So uh, you're from around here, or a transplant. You yeah. moved, and you were a delegate for Bernie from here. Yeah, I was the one Bernie delegate that got elected here. Okay. One of our six on the slate. Who'd you have to muscle for that? Uh, not easy around here to get elected, huh? Uh, I ran for city council here before, so and I know people who supported Biden all the way around. Okay. So they voted for Biden, but still checked me. So, okay. <laughs> so before we get to tonight, kind of bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were like 10 days away from Bernie possibly <laughs> clinching the nomination. Now we have this race to the bottom. Yeah. I, I personally voted for Biden. I, I, I'm not telling people how they should have voted, but that's what I did. But I, I was kind of saying in the car, I mean, I could have egg in my face. Maybe Biden will win by a landslide. But yeah. as of now, I'm thinking, like, why is it even this close? Yeah. If we were fed this steady diet of he's the safest, he's the most electable, you would think like 230, 230,000 people dead. God knows how many more. He should be crushing Trump in Florida and elsewhere. Why do you think it's even this close? I mean, I think a lot of it is uh, lesser two evils isn't a strong pitch and lack of enthusiasm is a real serious issue. And I know like around here, all the Democrat events were all like invite only and only like small events, whereas the Trump people were having their huge rallies. And obviously that's not the smart thing COVID wise but it's really bad for enthusiasm on our side. Right. You know, it's interesting because I was at a polling place uh, by Mountaintop. Uh, yep. And, uh, you know, not, not a lot of people wanted to talk, but I interviewed somebody who I'm pretty sure she was on the payroll for Biden. <laughs> she, she, had, she looked like, like she was talking talking points, not yeah. like a regular person. And all right, she gave the talking points like jobs, 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 and all this. So I asked her like one follow-up. I was like, so how is he specifically going to bring back the jobs or, you know, strike the unions. Yeah. And it's like everything discombobulated a little bit, like, yeah. you know, and obviously you get that with Trump people. Like yesterday, I challenged them. They, they didn't know it. when you challenge them, they go to like Hunter Biden. And, yeah. you know. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it stands to reason that this campaign was not about a lot of substance or policy. It was just more about, yeah. you know, moralistic things. Let's throw him off, which sucks because if Biden wins, I mean, we're in a crisis. And yeah. I, haven't, do something. <laughs> I, I haven't particularly heard, like, what's his stimulus plan? What's his plan to stave off the eviction crisis coming? Yeah. All those things. Yeah, I think, honestly, a lot of it is what do I think they're going to do? I mean, I think you can probably look at, like, the CARES Act and stuff to give you an idea of what they're going to do. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me is my girlfriend here, she works at the hospital. And so she has to deal with COVID patients all the time. So just the basics of like, wear a mask will actually matter. Cause I remember the whole time in this area with so many Trump people, we've had all the videos of the person who runs into the local grocery store without a mask on. Like literally the grocery store I go to, there were multiple people who got lifetime bans cause they kept running in without a mask on. So like, there's a lot of policy things he should do, but just the very least of not publicly denying it will do will be really helpful by the way i don't know if you know this but yesterday they had the highest case count in pennsylvania since i think march or april i think it was uh 2800 cases or something like that it's exploding everywhere and honestly you know i had COVID in april so i'm hoping i have some antibodies that last <laughs> but this event yesterday was like this dystopian horror film yeah you got 10,000 people out for trump Maybe one out of ten were wearing masks. Yeah. They're packed. And on top of being packed outside, then you have this row of buses yep. that they're going to pack them Everyone in buses. In and, yep. and it's like, I, I was asking, I thought very respectfully, like, why is this, <laughs> why is this tyranny yeah. a piece of cloth? And one guy, I don't know, maybe in his 20s, early 30s, says, it's just annoying. I said, <laughs> is it more annoying than death? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get it. But it really is, a, it really is like, Biden has been so lucky because all he's had to do is put on a mask, talk responsibility, talk responsibly, say, I'll listen to the scientists and do nothing more. Yeah. And he might win. Yeah. Yeah. Like my barbershop that I go to, they made the paper in 2016 because one of the barbers said he voted for Trump. Um, but everyone there, like in there, normally they don't talk about politics, people, but they're just like, we're all voting for Biden. Like their business is in so much trouble from the lockdowns and everything they're like he was such an idiot publicly on covid that we're all voting for biden right. so i think a lot of people are just like i going into this election was very scared before covid happened and i think like 
Democrats are lucky that COVID happened and that we're going to win because of it. Right, because I think without COVID, it, if this was like Marco Rubio versus Biden, yeah, Marco Rubio would be winning. If it was Mitt Romney, Nikki Haley, I think just about any country club cardboard cutout Republican <laughs> would be beating Biden. I mean, let's not even get into what Biden said this morning. I tweeted it was very controversial. He confused his granddaughter with his dead son, but I digress. Um, I was knocking all day, so I didn't even get to see yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to watch this. Apparently, people are explaining to me it's normal to confuse your deceased son with your living granddaughter. But I digress. Uh, so where does the progress? I know it's a heavy question, but where does progressives go from here? Because I mean, we don't know. But assuming Biden wins tonight. Um, you know, it's kind of like he's got Lawrence Summers advising him. He's got lobbyists lining up <laughs> yes. by all the reports. Kamala Harris is, you know, they say she's a progressive. I, I think we know the answer. And, uh, you know, I think uh, people are kind of kidding themselves that Bernie would be in his cabinet. Yeah, even like even Warren, who, <laughs> you know, is not my, my, my number one. I don't know. I hear these progressive groups saying, get Trump out and move Biden left. I don't know how you move this man left when he literally has told Wall Street, like, you're good, yeah. uh, when the people around him are basically alumni from Obama and Bill Clinton. Uh, are we going to move him left? Or is there some kind of pathway now with the economic pain for some type of economic protest? Yeah. I think also a huge thing is just getting more, better candidates elected to like the Congress, your state houses and stuff like a race I was doing a ton with is we have a public defender running across the river for state rep. So and she's running against a really bad Republican. So for me, it's about getting better people around him. And like I have a friend who works for Biden and I told her like your one job is to make sure Larry Summers doesn't get near the White House. And she told me she can't guarantee that. Um, uh, so I think like if, even if Warren got to be Treasury Secretary, that was when she was running. I was like, I don't want her to run. I want her to be Treasury Secretary. So if that does happen, I would be excited. But I think a lot of it is just going to be we're going to have to harass all of our senators, our congressmen. Like our progressive group, we do have good relations with Senator Casey, who, I mean, he's not like a wild progressive, but he picks up the phone when we call. So we think that we can get him to be a little better. And even he, like, he got elected more as, like, a blue dog, and every year he's better than the year he was before. So I think there's a lot of just the public pressure makes them shift. I am so much less, less optimistic, optimistic than you are. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm a cynical Susie. I think these Wall Street creatures are popping the champagne. Yeah. Uh, this guy is pretending to be some lunch bucket, like, yeah. middle-class guy. He's not. He's been lining his pockets with Wall Street money. He's literally, it's funny, somebody said to me today, oh, him and unions. I'm like, what? Yes. He's been taking all this money from union busting companies. Uh, I could go on. I don't want to like pop the, you know, I don't want to ruin the wine mom's night. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and I, this is, I voted for him. And, and I know a lot of people don't like that, but I just felt, hey, you vote for whoever you want. But I think Trump, is, once I saw Trump taking joy rides ar <laughs> around Walter Reed with COVID, I mean, that's not a sociopath. That's a psychopath. Uh, you know, walking up the stairs with COVID into the White House, taking off the mask. Like, you can't create a James Bond villain. And honestly, I don't think he's joking. I don't think Trump is joking that he wants to serve more than two terms. And he's got a 6-3 Supreme Court to do it. So, I don't know. Um, Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.